Hello, Harry Brownlow, uh, shoulder specialist. I'm going to talk today about shoulder instability. So instability describes when the shoulder dislocates or partially dislocates. So that means it feels like it's nearly come out of joint but hasn't properly. And we call that a subluxation. Now there's lots of reasons why a shoulder might become unstable. First reason might be that you've just got a very loose shoulder. Probably you have multiple joints that are loose. You probably think of yourself as a loose or bendy person, perhaps even double jointed. And this is particularly true for girls in their 14s, 15s, 16s. Think of the brilliant young girl gymnasts. They would be someone who's very flexible and they would find it very easy to dislocate their shoulder, even perhaps without any injury whatsoever. But most people aren't overly um, flexible within their joints and they have a different sort of problem. So the commonest reason for a shoulder to dislocate is because the ligaments or labrum that hold the ball into the socket have been torn. So something has been damaged at the time of your initial injury, whether that was a fall on the rugby pitch, a fall skiing, a fall off your bike, many different reasons why it might have happened. If it's not because a ligament has torn, the next commonest reason is because the rotator cuff tendons have torn. And this is a particular problem for anyone over 40 and we'll be talking more about that in a second. And then the third reason why the shoulder might dislocate if it's not simply due to laxity is because something has broken, a bone has broken, you've sustained a fracture. And now that might be on the socket side, so that's a glenoid fracture, or it may be on the humeral head side, and that would most commonly be a greater tuberosity. Fracture. So if you have had a dislocation of your shoulder and you will know that it's dislocated, there's some strange intuition, even if you've never had one before, you will just know that's what's happened and you should believe your intuition, it will be true. If you believe you've had a dislocated shoulder, you need to go and have an x-ray and you need a doctor to check that you haven't also had an injury to one of your nerves. Now thankfully nerve injury is not so common but you need an x-ray to make sure that you haven't had a fracture or a break of one of the bones when you dislocated your shoulder. Because if you have, you probably will need an operation to put those bony bits back together again. But this is the important bit. X-rays only show bones. And if you are over 40, there's a very uh, serious risk that you might have torn the rotator cuff tendons deep inside your shoulder. And these will no not show up on an x-ray. So it's really important that if you're over 40 and you've had a dislocation, you must have your rotator cuff investigated and that means either having an ultrasound scan or an MRI scan. Say you're under 40 and you've had an x-ray and there's nothing broken, then how you choose to manage it, and that's the discussion you'll need to have with your specialist, will determine whether or not you need further investigations. So I'm now assuming that we know that you've dislocated and that you've had your baseline investigations, that is an x-ray and or ultrasound scan, and you've seen a doctor, and now we need to talk about how to treat it. Well, really, this is a complicated field and one that you ought to be discussing with a shoulder specialist. But if I start from the beginning, if I start with a very unstable joint because of underlying laxity, that is, the very bendy, typically very bendy young girls, surgery is very rarely needed or appropriate for people like this. So uh, in these circumstances, this is um, much best treated with physiotherapy, trying to learn how to control the muscles around the shoulder and how to build up the strength around the shoulder. Uh, and it's only very rarely that an operation might be entertained and always that would be an absolute last resort. Let's assume that you're not one of those flexible young girls uh, and that you have dislocated your shoulder. Well, as we discussed before, if, you, if the x-ray shows that you've fractured something, that probably will need an operation to pin it back into place. And interestingly, once that bone heals back in place and in good position, uh, 
the risk of you going on to develop further dislocations is really very small. So the thing that's given way in your shoulder happens to be bone. If we can get the bone to heal back in the right position, then it's very unlikely that you'll go and have a recurrent problem with dislocation. If you happen to be in that unlucky group over 40 and your ultrasound or MRI scan shows that you have a rotator cuff tear, then almost certainly this too ought to be fixed with an operation. And as with a fracture, once the rotator cuff tear has been fixed and healed, the risk of you having a recurrent problem of dislocation is very small. But actually, the vast majority of people who dislocate don't fall into any of these groups. They're the group who have a problem with a ligament or labral injury. And if you are in that category, you will almost certainly be requiring an MRI scan or maybe even an MRI arthrogram, which is similar to an MRI, but also involves the injection of a little bit of dye just prior to your scan. And this is a very powerful investigative tool looking at the ligaments and the labrum. Now, if your ligaments and labrum are shown to be torn, you then have to have a very careful discussion with your surgeon because whether you progress to surgery depends very much on your age and the kind of sport and activities that you enjoy doing. So at the extreme examples, if you are a 17 year old keen rugby player and would like to carry on playing rugby, then the risk of you going on to have recurrent dislocations if you do not have surgery is extremely high. By that I mean 90, 95% likely that you will have another dislocation and another and another unless you have surgery to address the problem. Which means that as a 17 year old rugby fanatic, after your first dislocation, I'm afraid it's very likely that you're going to need an operation. And the big problem with this is that uh, you'll need six months without playing rugby after your operation. So you need to think carefully about the timing of your operation. If you're approaching end of season, you might wish to just get the operation done so that you're ready for pre-season uh, in the autumn. But if you're early in the season and you're keen to finish the season, we may have to talk about ways of how you can manage your shoulder while it's still at risk of further dislocation. At the other end of the spectrum, you might be a 39-year-old chap who just played a one-off game of football but who usually doesn't involve himself in collision and contact sport. And in those circumstances, even if your ligament and labrum has torn, the risk of you having a recurrent problem with instability, the instability is relatively low. And in your circumstances, it's probably worth not rushing on towards an operation, but rather having some good physiotherapy and seeing how things settle down in the future. So that is most of what I wanted to talk about here. Two other things to touch on. One is the role of a sling. Slings are now um, are well recognised as only being useful for providing you with comfort. Wearing a sling will not reduce the risk of you having a recurrent dislocation in the future and will not reduce the risk of you needing surgery. So wear a sling while you find it comfortable, throw it in the bin as soon as you find it annoying. And the second is the role of physiotherapy. Physiotherapy does have a very important role within the management of someone who has instability, that is, who dislocates. But physiotherapy cannot cure a fractured bone, it cannot repair a torn tendon, and it cannot repair torn ligaments. So if something has torn inside your shoulder, which happens in the majority of people, physiotherapy will not be able to address what's torn. It can help build the strength in other muscles around your shoulder and it can be very good at managing and helping you recover movement and pain. But in many circumstances, physio on its own will not get you back on the rugby pitch. Thank you very much.